In this part of the video, we're going to look at respiratory data collection and the data analysis. So firstly, we're going to ask the participant uh, to put a nose clip on. Uh, it's nice and comfortable, but making sure that no air can get in or out through the nose. We then ask the participant to put their mouth around the mouthpiece, creating a good seal. Again, making sure no air is escaping um, and all air that's being inhaled and exhaled is passing through the device. At this point, we'll just ask the participant uh, to breathe normally, try and uh, attain a normal breathing rhythm, and try not to be overly conscious of their breathing. I'm going to pause recording for a moment, and just while they're normalizing their breathing rhythm, and then I'm going to start again, and we're going to record about a minute's worth of breathing uh, normally. Uh, we're looking for a normal tidal volume here. At the end of that minute, which I'll start now, we will look to see if uh, we will look to ask the participant to do uh, an inspiration um, from the top of their normal uh, tidal volume uh, all the way as much in, to take as much air in as they can and then to breathe out forcefully until um, they've exhaled all the air, air from their lungs. So at the moment, Jack is getting into a, a normal breathing pattern. Um, in most individuals at rest, uh, the breathing rate will be about 12 to 15 breaths per minute, and the tidal volume will be somewhere between maybe 0.5 and 1.5 liters per breath. And from this, we can calculate minute ventilation. So minute ventilation is equal to tidal volume multiplied by respiratory rate. So in the examples I gave there, if the tidal volume was 1 litre and the respiratory rate was 15, the minute ventilation will be 15 litres per minute. Okay, we have about a minute's worth of data collected there. So I'm going to ask the participant at this point, uh, maybe two or three breaths, when they get to the top of their normal tidal volume, to breathe in as far as they can and then breathe out and as hard and fast as possible. So when you're ready, Blow, 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 and stop and breathe one minute. Okay, so this finishes the data collection piece of the of the lab, and what we want to do now is analyze the data on screen. So you can see here we have two channels. We have we are measuring the flow. The volume of air, so the, the flow rate of air, and we're also measuring um, the lung volume. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to calculate um, a normal tidal volume, and then we want to calculate two other factors the inspiratory reserve volume and the expiratory reserve volume. So if we go back through the data at this time, we might go to somewhere in the latter part of that minute of normal data. And what we can look to see is we can use our M badge here and we can bring it to the bottom um, of a particular breath and then we can measure at the top of that breath and what that will do is that will give us our volume so we can see here uh, this participant's um, tidal volume at this point was at the upper end about 1.5 liters per breath and we can also calculate um, the participant's breathing rate by counting the number of breaths in that particular minute. So we can go back and count through these. And from that, we could calculate that minute ventilation, whereby we would multiply that 1.5 liters uh, by the number of breaths in the minute. So for example, 1.5 with 15 breaths, we'd multiply those two values together um, to get about 22.5 liters per minute as the minute ventilation. Okay. If we look towards the end in our, our, our last exercise, and um, what I'll do first is I'll just take this M badge back to the corner. Um, so when we want to analyze again. Uh, and if I look at the volume um, here on inspiration and expiration, so if we look at this flow uh, very briefly, what we see here is a, a change in flow, and what we hear is a rapid rate of flow here as the participant breathed out. Okay, so in terms of our inspiration, our inspiratory volume, we look from the top of one particular breath and to the top of, so the top of the previous breath to the top of that forced inspiration. And from that, we can calculate our inspiratory reserve volume. So if I bring my M badge here, 
okay and take this point here before we actually began to exhale we can see that there was an inspiratory reserve volume of about two liters so Jack's normal tidal volume was about one and a half liters but there was two liters of additional capacity there okay so that would be our inspiratory reserve volume in this case and we would use that for our calculations <clears throat> We can also look at the expiratory reserve volume. So if we go to the point of expiration on the previous breath, and then we look at this maximal point. So we had, if you remember the participant, blue, 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 until there was no air left in the lungs or they couldn't expire any further. And if we calculate that, um, it was 2.25 liters. So we have about 2.25 liters of expiratory reserve volume, so additional air that we can um, expire. So if we add those together, we can start to look at our inspiratory capacity and our total capacity. So use the equations which are in the lab book and we'll go through in the next video. Use those to calculate the different lung volumes and variables there and input the data into the Excel file.